If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Friday, March 14th, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. The prestigious Sullivan Award nominees were announced this week, and today's guest is one of those nominees. Joining me in the Finis Monitor will be Rachel Fatal, a star water polo player who was seemingly everywhere in 2013. She played every game in the 2013 college season for UCLA, then participated in the World Championships in Barcelona with Team USA, and then had a stellar tournament at the Junior World Championship. So it should come as no surprise that she's being regarded as one of the best amateur athletes in the United States. And Rachel joins me now via Skype from Los Angeles. Hi, Rachel. It's good to see you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? All right. So congratulations on being a Sullivan Award nominee. Thank you so much. Did you have any inkling at all that someone had submitted your name for consideration? I had no idea, honestly. So the day that the nominees were announced, who told you, where were you? Give us an idea of, of how you found out. Um, I was actually in class and I received an email from Greg Meskel, who is one of our media people at USA Water Polo, and he told me that I had been nominated for this award. Okay, that seems like, I, I would have imagined, I guess it's not like getting an Oscar nomination or anything, but I would imagine you would have been flooded with calls and people wanted to call you personally. and. Just a little bit of an email seems like, you know, maybe next time when you're nominated, they should, you know, <laughs> have, you know, stop the class and everything, have, have the UCLA band coming in playing music, because it's a pretty big <laughs> deal to be nominated for the Sullivan Awards. Yeah, I mean, maybe if I get nominated again, that'll happen, but no, getting an email was really nice. Did the uh, water polo team there do anything to celebrate the announcement? No, not really. Okay, business as usual, I guess. Yeah. Well, as I said, you were very busy in 2013. What was the highlight for you? Um, definitely winning a Junior World Championship. Um, we haven't won since 2005, so it was kind of a really big deal to be able to win this, this last year. And my team was amazing. We won every game by at least two, and so it was kind of it was a good tournament. Yeah, it's fun. And, great win. And as I said, you you know that was kind of the culmination of a long year. You you were with UCLA, you got third place in the NCAA tournament. You were with Team USA at the World Championships. I believe you guys got fifth there. So it must have just been a big relief to, after all those third place and fifth place to finally get a gold medal. Yeah, it was it was an amazing feeling. It was a long long time of water polo, and to finish that with a win was just the best way to go out. Well, I want to talk about your uh, last season at UCLA for a bit. You played in all 35 games, which I would imagine requires a lot of stamina. Uh, how do you train to make yourself able to perform at a high level for every game? I mean, my team here, we go double days almost every day, and we lift at least twice a week. So training is definitely grueling and long, and that gets us ready for every single game. So probably when you have on game day, it's, it's probably like a, a little vacation for you. It's, I mean, having only one game or like only having to be working out hard for about two hours is kind of nice, but I mean, it takes a lot of, a lot, it's a lot more energy going in for a game than I would say for all those hours of practice. Yeah, I've played water polo before. I know it's not an easy sport in any sense of the word. Um, you're an attacker. Give us an idea of what an attacker does. Okay, so uh, I want to relate to almost like basketball. You know how there's like a person in the center and the people around the perimeter? Yeah. I'm one of those people around the perimeter, and I, I play more on the 4-5 side, so I more distribute the ball to other people. And it's a lot, it's a lot of movement. It's a lot of swimming. And I don't know. It's kind of hard to – it's a hard one to describe. Well, it was good to have the basketball analogy. I think a lot of people can really understand that. But, it, you know, you talked about your passing the ball around a lot. You score a lot, too. I mean, you had 
one of the highest scoring percentages on the team. So <laughs> you're 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 not just handing it off to everyone else. I mean, you're 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 contributing to the points as well. I mean, in any sport, well, you got to kind of even everything out. But yeah, I I was fortunate to have teammates that would distribute the ball to me as well. So. How did how does one become an attacker in water polo? Is it is the coach look at you and say you're going to be a great attacker? Um, well, basically there's like really four positions. You're going to be a goalie, a center, a center defender, or an attacker. Um, I'm not really big enough to be a center, and I'm more on the fast side in water polo, so it's easier for me to be moving around a lot and doing that. Okay, well that makes why. sense. Makes sense. How does the team look this season? The team this season looks really good. I have a lot of faith in the team this season. I really high expectations. So we'll see. I'm very excited for this season, though. Nothing wrong with having high expectations. I see the uh, third place trophy from last season, season over your right shoulder there. I'm sure you guys are looking to upgrade that one. Oh, yeah. Definitely going to upgrade that one this year, I think. Okay. So. Um, Who's going to be the big rival that's going to get in the way of doing that? I don't know. SC and Stanford are looking pretty good this year again, but we'll see. Well, I'm sure you wake up every day saying you've got to beat SC. You've got to make sure that your cross-time rival does not beat you this year. Yeah, playing SC is always just so much more, like, it's a game that just, like, gets you so much more pumped up than, like, any other game just because, like, they are very good and it's our cross-time rival, so... Yeah. There's always extra energy going into that one. Right. Um, in high school, you were a, in addition to being a water polo player, you were a swimmer and a volleyball player. Um, why did water polo stand out for you? Um, I, I was a distance swimmer when I swam, and I don't know. I just, it was just like, there wasn't interaction with other people, and swimming was, is such like, an individual sport that like I couldn't do it I needed I need other people to be able to talk to I can't just put my head down and swim for that long and volleyball just I don't know I played volleyball my whole life my mom's a coach and I love volleyball still and I play still today but water polo I don't know kind of just took the reins for everything and it's kind of the best of both worlds you get to stay in the water and I mean water polo isn't exactly volleyball but I mean you're still you still kind of have that the ball handling and, and definitely the team interaction. Yeah, they go hand in hand together very well. Um, and I know you've got a, a big season, like you said, a big season ahead of you. Um, what do you have looking forward to this summer in terms of, you know, are you going to have some international competitions lined up? Oh, yeah, this summer is packed. The schedule just one came out a few days ago to the people who are training with the USA team right now for water polo, and it is going to be a long summer of water polo, but very exciting. What's the, uh, what's the big uh, focus for the summer? The big focus this summer is World Cup, I believe. Okay, that's always... And it's not till August, and so there's many tournaments leading up to that, and a lot of training, yeah. and, and it's great. Well, I know you got you got to get back to the pool. Got a lot of doubles to get another double to get ready for. Before we let you do that, though, uh, we're going to submit you to our final five. These are five questions we ask all of our guests on the Morning Swim Show. We'll shake it up a little bit. Usually, our questions are a little swimming related. We'll ask a couple water polo related questions. The first one is: um, you mentioned a couple of the other positions that are available in water polo. If you could play any of those other positions, which one would you most like to play? Um. I think I'd probably be a goalie. I think I think being a goalie is really fun. And uh, in practice, if we're ever like, if we ever have like kind of like free time and get to mess around, like I love playing goalie. You like having all those balls thrown at you at high speed? <laughs> yes and no. If they're coming at my face, not really. But <laughs> if I can block them, then yes. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, which current water polo rule would you like to see removed or changed? Ooh. That's a tough one. They just re recent, really recently this year they implemented a rule saying that you can't. This is for USA water polo, not collegiate water polo. But they implemented a rule that says you can't foul on the opposing team's side of half. Or, yeah, on, if you're on defense, you can't foul on the opposing team's side of half, or else it's an ejection automatically. And I think that rule is going to be really hard to play with this next summer. So I would love for that one to get changed back. 
Okay, well, we'll see. Um, what's a career or job you would most like to try? I've always wanted to be a physical therapist or like a sports trainer. I love my trainer here at school and on the USA team, and I think what they do is amazing. They help athletes recover from injuries. They help athletes prevent and job to try. Okay. On the flip side of that, what's a career or job you know you would not like to try? Anything with a de desk job. I cannot sit behind a desk for nine, ten hours a day. Yeah. That'd be that'd be horrible for me. Makes sense. Makes sense. Last question for you. Uh, what's a place you would like to go most for vacation? Ooh, it's a tough one. There's a lot of good places out there. Um. Anything tropical, probably. Yeah. Anything on an island would be nice. <laughs> Definitely. Get these nice swim tan lines away. It'd be perfect. <laughs> well, Rachel, congratulations on being a Sullivan Award nominee. I'm sure it's, it's, it's a very fantastic honor. I'm sure you're thrilled. And hopefully we'll get a lot of people going to aausullivan.org to um, vote for you in the public voting. And maybe we'll see you as one of the, the three finalists. Yes, thank you so much for this interview. Okay, my pleasure. Have a good rest of the season. Thank you. All right, Bye. and our thanks to you as well for watching today's show. Social media is where it's at these days, and you can like Swimming World on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates, videos, and photos, in addition to all the latest news on SwimmingWorld.com. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.